Uh, ben Shapiro, thank you for coming to GW. Uh, my name is Pranay, I'm a freshman here, um, and full disclosure, I am a socialist. Um, and so, uh, so much for the tolerant right. Um, I, so my question well, I mean, is about- You're here, right? I mean, like <laughs> uh, so we'll treat you well, don't worry. So my question is, I've seen your videos, I've seen you at other universities here talking about the immorality of socialism, and when you do, you focus on socialism as the idea of wealth redistribution, you know, taking from the rich, giving to the poor, taking from whoever, giving to whoever. But what, but I think that ignores and that misses the point of what many socialists, myself and many of my comrades, see socialism as being. And in fact, what we see as integral, um, the debate of whether or how, how much to redistribute wealth is a separate debate altogether, but the fundamental, tenet of socialism is control of the means of production by the workers. The idea that a worker is entitled to the full product of their labor. Uh, this is manifested in the real world in the example of worker cooperatives, employee-owned businesses, and so on. So setting aside any notions of wealth redistribution, someone already asked about that, what is so immoral about believing that a worker is entitled to the full value of their labor, um, especially given that such a, the enterprises organized in such a way have been shown to be more effective than traditionally capitalistically uh, organized businesses. Okay, so I think we have to separate out a couple of strands there. Number one, if you're gonna talk about the efficacy of, of workers owning the means of production, are we talking about the government owning the means of production or are we talking about workers owning the means of production? Because if you're talking about the government, that is wildly untrue, the last statement that you just made that it's effective. When the government owns the means of production, generally everything blows. Okay, that, that's, that's actually the story of Cuba. That is the story of Venezuela. The, the democratic socialist countries of Norway are generally not owned, except, well, Norway is an exception in which the government owns a lot of stock in various companies, but those companies are run along free enterprise lines. They're not run along redistributionist lines, actually. Uh, and they also happen to have a massive sovereign oil wealth fund. But if you look at countries like, like Denmark, for example, there's still enormous private ownership of business. This is true in most of the, uh, most of the Nordic and, and Scandinavian countries, anyway. Uh, and when you, if you're talking about you know, workers owning a business together, and for, I mean, I am a worker at my company. I own my business with another person who owns the company with me and a couple of investors. The investors have sunk their labor, which they made money from, right? Money is just a, is just a tangible trade for labor. And they took that money and they invested it in us. So I'm like, is Bill Gates not a worker at his own company? He invented the company. So I'm, I'm, and, and I'm also wondering how the worker is not owning his own labor when he freely chooses to alienate that labor in exchange for pay. Like, it, it, the, my problem with socialism is, is that it is essentially somebody subjectively deciding the value of your own labor. The beautiful thing about the free market is that you don't get to subjectively decide what your labor is worth. Right? You can't go major in something useless and then come to me and say, I want $100,000 a year for my useless major so I can dig holes in the ground. Right? That's, that'd be, and we, we all recognize that's stupid. But the, la the labor value of theory, uh, which I mean the, the, um, the uh, value labor of theory, I'm, it's been a long day. Uh, the, 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 um, the labor, yes, the labor theory of value, my goodness. Uh, the labor theory of value, which is that the amount of work you put into something dictates the value of the thing is a bunch of crap. Right? If I spend all day making mud pies outside, that's an awful lot of work. It's also completely useless. The way that you actually determine the value of work is by trading it for somebody else's work in a fully voluntary fashion. So if you're asking whether I'm OK with, for example, private sector unions, workers get together and they go to the owner and they say, we want more of the profit margin. Sure, as long as you're not kneecapping somebody. right? But if you kneecap somebody, then I don't approve of your means anymore. If you're asking me if a bunch of workers decide to get together and form a joint stock corporation, of course, that's how most corporations are formed. Most LLCs are formed this way. It's a couple of guys who get together, band their labor together. It's like two guys. And then after it grows, they decide to hire other people. So we, we need to be very specific. When you talk about the, the ownership of the means of production, are you talking about my version? Because that's called capitalism. Or are you talking about where the government owns the means of production and, or crams down on voluntary associations' rules as to the means of production? I'm actually, I'm talking about, about neither. Um, I don't, I reject state socialism personally. What I'm referring to is specifically, for example, the term given is worker cooperatives. The most prominent example, the Mondragon Corporation in Spain owned the, the uh, there is no investor or cap, like capitalist group that pro owns the profits. When the company turns a profit, that profit is distributed among the workers, some 80,000 employees. It's a wildly successful corporation. I mean, is it a voluntary association? Is there any cram down happening? No, there's not. Then good, but it's capitalist. That's not, that's not, that's not socialist. It's not. 